This was something that happened so long ago that a lot of details are a little blurry. It's not like it happened yesterday. I'll try my best to fill in smaller details that I don't fully remember with how I best remember things played out. It was the last day of school. I was in the fourth grade. Fourth grade was the last year in our elementary school where kids had to be picked up by their parents. Fifth graders were allowed to walk home on their own. My mom would always be the one to pick me up. On the last day of school, my friend Dennis and I had a playdate plan to celebrate the last day of school. Dennis wasn't in my class this year, but we had been friends since kindergarten. He was in a different dismissal hallway from me. After school was over, we single file lined up and walked to the exit door at the end of the hall, where we waited outside by our teacher, Miss Blue. I waited for Dennis's dad to appear from the crowd of parents shuffling in and out of the parking lot next to the doors. Then I heard my name, Tommy, Tommy. I look over and see a man waving at me as he approached. He introduced himself as Dennis's uncle and said he was picking me up. I went over to Miss Blue and said I'm being picked up. She asked where is he sweetie and I pointed to Dennis's uncle who waved at Miss Blue. Miss Blue dismissed me and I went with the man. He led us through the crowd and was a very quick and jittery talker, like he spoke fast and had a bit of a stutter. He was walking incredibly fast, it was almost hard to keep up with him with my backpack on. He explained to me that his brother, or Dennis's dad, was working later than expected, so he was driving me back. We got to his car, which was a dark red hatchback type car from what I remember, and it took me this long to acknowledge the giant elephant in the room. Where was Dennis? Why weren't we picking him up too? The man turned to look at me in the back seat and said that Dennis was already at his house. I was shy around people I didn't know, especially adults, and I wasn't one to openly speak my mind if I was confused. But I was very confused. This was making less and less sense. The whole drive, the man kept yapping, telling stories of his days in elementary, asking me questions like what sports I played, what we're learning in class. If I had to guess, we were in the car for like 10 minutes, which honestly for our town where houses were right on top of each other, that was a while. My house was a five minute walk away from the school. We were definitely in an area I wasn't familiar with when he parked the car in front of his house. His house looked pretty normal to me from what I remember. He led us inside and shut the door and locked it behind us. It was really, really dark inside the place and I realized why. All the curtains were shut. It almost felt like it was nighttime in there, especially because the only source of light was a dim lamp in the corner of the room. He then looked at me and smiled. I said, where's Dennis? And he started acting really jittery and nervous seeming. He said something like, oh, I think he's downstairs playing video games. Give me a second, wait here. He then disappeared into a nearby room and I heard a door open and then footsteps descending into a basement. I know my heart was already racing. I knew I was in danger. I went to the door to quietly try to open it, but I couldn't. It had some kind of lock that must have needed a key for. I really started to panic now, yet I still probably held out a little bit of hope that Dennis would be coming up those stairs, but I knew the chances of that were slim. I regretted entering that house. I did the only thing I could think to do. I went to the kitchen and found a phone hung on the wall. I picked it off the receiver and dialed 911. The first thing I said when they answered was in a whisper. Please come to this house, I've been kidnapped. They heard me, they acknowledged me, but I didn't say another word. I hid the phone under a towel in the corner of the room with 911 still on the line. I hurried back to where the man left me as I already heard his footsteps coming back upstairs. Then he called my name, saying, come down, Dennis is down here. Then there was a pause. He repeated my name, and when I didn't answer, he came up the stairs fully to look at me. He asked me if I was okay. I felt so sick and I was so scared. I hated myself for walking into the situation and not being wiser. I asked in a very scared voice if I could leave and I remember the change in his face. His fake friendly smile disappeared as he realized that I was no longer falling for this. He walked closer to me in a gentle manner until he was close enough to grab my wrist aggressively and he started pulling me towards the basement. I screamed and cried and he screamed at me, I'll let you go if you stop and behave. So I listened. I went down the stairs, and halfway down, the door slammed shut behind me, and I heard it lock. I walked fully down the stairs to this empty, unfinished basement with a concrete floor and one singular support beam in the middle of the room. There was a depressing yellow glow in the room from one exposed light bulb hanging on the ceiling. If there was a place you'd imagine kidnapped children to go, this would be it. 
I heard his heavy footsteps upstairs. You could hear everything in this house. I don't know what he was doing, but I heard him walking around for a while. Then he came to the basement door, opened it, and he called down asking if I'm hungry. I replied no. I didn't want him going into the kitchen seeing the missing phone. He shut the door and locked it again. I sat down there, waiting, with my heart in my throat, and then I heard it. The doorbell ringing three times from upstairs, followed by banging sounds, which were definitely the sounds of police banging on the door. I would refrain from screaming until I heard the front door open, but I never heard the man's footsteps approach the door. The doorbell kept ringing and I kept hearing the bangs. This went on for some time, until I heard a really loud bang sound and then multiple heavy footsteps and multiple screaming voices. I started screaming for help as loud as I could at the top of the stairs, banging on the door. The door was unlocked, and a police officer on the other side grabbed hold of me and hurried me outside. There were at least three cop cars outside. I had to tell everything to two of the cops outside as we waited for my parents to show up. The man from inside was brought outside and into a cop car in handcuffs, and that was the last time I ever saw him. When my parents arrived on the scene, my mom was bawling her eyes out. There had already been a whole scene at the school as cops were called and Dennis's dad realized what happened. This man was a work associate of Dennis's father. When he somehow learned that Dennis's dad would be picking up Dennis and I from school on the last day, he seized the opportunity to do what he did. A complete sick fuck. I don't know how he found out what I looked like. As I got older, I never really asked for more details because I try not to think about it. My mom went to counseling with me for months after this incident. Let's just say my parents didn't have kind words for Miss Blue, not verifying if I actually knew the person picking me up. If I didn't think to call the police before he basically threw me in that basement, I know for a fact I'd be dead right now. This was like 17 years ago. That man might be out of prison for all I know. It was junior year of high school, and it was the last day of school. A lot of people cut school this day or left early after lunch period. My friends and I were some of the latter. It was a stormy, dark day. A bunch of people from our grade originally planned to hit the beach on the last day of school, but that was obviously canceled. So my smaller core group of friends decided to do something else. There used to be an abandoned elementary school in town that hadn't been used for like 10 years. There were plans to tear it down by the year's end. So, still wanting to do something fun on the last day of school, we all agreed to break into the building and just fuck around exploring. There were no cameras in that old building, and on a stormy day, no one would be outside monitoring the place or anything. So, we all left after lunch period. Our friend Eddie already had a car and his license, so he drove us all to the abandoned school. The school was in the middle of a neighborhood, not on any main roads or anything. There was a back parking lot covered by overgrown bushes and trees on one side and the walls of the school on two other sides. It was a perfect spot to park and go unnoticed. The place wasn't boarded up or anything, it was just locked up. Eddie had a baseball bat in his trunk that he took out to smash one of the windows of the school. I was honestly so nervous that even through the pouring rain, one of the houses over the fence would hear the smashing sound. We all watched and nervously laughed as Eddie swung the bat into the window in front of the car, and after a few good swings, smashing it. He pushed away the stray pieces of glass stuck to the frame with the bat, and then he waved us over. We one by one climbed through the window into the school. My logic was that the school was being torn down anyway. What does a broken window matter? We all were inside the building now. The window we climbed through was actually one of the windows for a classroom. A lot of stuff was still left in the room, including the desks and some decorations on the walls. Based on the decorations, it looked like we were in a fourth or fifth grade classroom. It was very surreal to be inside of what was once an active classroom where little kids would come to learn. Now nothing but a cold, dark, and abandoned room collecting dust waiting to be destroyed. The sounds of thunder and lightning outside also added to the surreal feeling of it all. There were no lights on in the building. Power to the place was likely cut completely. We anticipated this though. The flashlights on our phones were plenty to get around and see. Even without them, it wasn't completely pitch black in there, as even though it was a dark day, some light was still creeping in through the windows and doors. We started traversing the hallways, going from room to room. Each classroom was still full of desks and chairs that hadn't been sat in in probably a decade. Thank you. I appreciate you watching this video.
After all, it means that my efforts are not in vain. Please subscribe to the Box of Incredible Stories channel so that you don't miss new interesting videos that will be uploaded to the channel. New videos are uploaded for you every day. Thank you if you are already a subscriber. Now keep watching and listening to this fascinating story. We all four were in the same classroom when there was a sound that echoed down the hallway and into the classroom. We all went silent and turned off our lights for a moment. After a flash of lightning, we slowly accepted that it was probably nothing, so we continued on. We just went from room to room as our wet shoes all squeaked on the floors. Sneaking around wasn't possible, really. A lot of things in the school were visibly decaying. You could really tell no one had stepped foot in there in ages. As we neared the corner of the hall, I turned around just to look back down the other way, and at the doorway of one of the classrooms, it looked like there was something sticking out from the classroom. I asked my friends to also look. Their lights would maybe help see what it was. When all four of us were pointing our phone flashlights toward the door, whatever that thing we were seeing was retracted into the classroom. All four of us quietly went oh shit amongst ourselves and we started running down the intersecting hallway. We stopped when we were far enough away. It seemed we were in the kindergarten wing now. Then we heard another sound echo from down the hallway. It seemed we weren't alone. But who could be in here was the question. The place was locked up and every light in the building was off. The sound scared us into going into the first classroom we could find and shutting the door. It was indeed a kindergarten classroom. We were now concerned we'd get in trouble, so we waited in silence with our flashlights off. The rain was still coming down hard, and there was still thunder and lightning crashing every 20 seconds or so. Suddenly the door to the classroom clicked open, and someone pushed it as it eerily creaked to a fully open position. We didn't see anyone at the doorway though, and the hallway was almost pitch black. We all tried our best to stay quiet, and then, slowly, something appeared through the doorway. It was the shape of a head. We all saw it, and when there was another flash of lightning, we saw what it was. It was in fact someone's head, looking into the classroom directly at us. I started apologizing for all of us, saying we're leaving. The person at the doorway didn't move. They motionlessly and almost lifelessly just peered around the doorway in the classroom. Eddie asked, do you work here? No response. Eddie had a fuck this moment clearly. He handed me the bat as he struggled to unlock one of the windows to slide it open just enough to crawl through. He crawled out first, then my other two friends, and I was last. Before I crawled out, I looked back one more time at the head at the doorway. I crawled through as quickly as I could, fearing I'd hear the person run up behind me and grab my legs. Once I was out, I ran to catch up with my friends who were already booking it back to Eddie's car. We drove out of there in a hurry and never looked back. The building was torn down later that year and has since been turned into a park. We never got in trouble for breaking in. To this day, we have no idea if that was some kind of worker or just some random person. Either way, it was extremely creepy behavior on their part. When I was a freshman in college, I took a chemistry class. It was really difficult for me. The tables were arranged in groups of four. I sat at a middle table at the left side all the way to the end. Next to me was a guy named Zach. He was very awkward. He gave me Reddit moderator vibes. To describe his appearance, he was like 5'8", he was a little overweight, and he had a really ugly, patchy beard. But he knew his stuff in chemistry. I think he was just good in school overall. We started to talk in a pretty cordial way when he noticed I sucked in class and I would ask him for help. He started offering to do my homework for me and he even let me cheat off him on tests. I never got any kind of flirtatious vibes from Zach, but that might have been because he was just too awkward to flirt in person. He eventually asked for my number so that he could send me homework related stuff. Obviously I gave it to him. He was helping me out a ton and didn't give off any threatening vibes. He just seemed a little reclusive. Fast forward to the last day of class and Zach did something completely unexpected. He asked me if I wanted to go on a date with him after class. I had no physical attraction to Zach in the slightest and our personalities were complete opposites. 
but he did help me throughout the semester maintain an A, so I had to let him down super politely. I lied and told him I'm going away to Miami for the next couple of weeks and won't be around. He right away responded, what about when you get back? I felt like two weeks was long enough of a gap in seeing each other where he would probably lose interest. So I said, yeah, I could be around, or something like that. He responded with a really cringy, cool, as he nodded his head in response. From here till the end of class that day was really awkward for me. After class, I left straight for my car and drove right home. I was a commuter, not a dormer, so after the last day of class was over, that was it. It was Thursday, and my other friends who went to the same school wanted to go out that night, so we hit town that night, and at some point, I got a text from Zach. He asked, when are you going to Miami? I told my friends all about Zach while we were drunk, how he got me an A, but now he wanted a date. My friends joked that I should just go on the date with him to be nice. I joked back sarcastically, yeah, for sure. I told myself I'd respond to it later, but I was drunk and completely forgot to. The next day, I woke up to two follow-up texts, one with question marks, and then the next one, you're going to ignore me now that you don't need me anymore, right? So I replied, hey, I'm sorry, I was packing. I'm going to Miami today. He replied almost instantly, saying, okay. Obviously, there was no Miami trip, but he should have never found that out. Later that night, my girls and I went out again, and while out, I got a scary text from Zach saying, I thought you said you were going to Miami tonight. I almost dropped my drink when I saw this. I showed it to my girls, and they were all freaked out just like I was. I replied to Zach, what do you mean? And he replied, nothing, forget it, I just don't like liars. I genuinely was scared that I was being stalked. I looked around the whole bar, but he wasn't there, at least as far as I knew. So what the hell? I just didn't answer. At that point, I never planned on answering him again. It wasn't until late that night, shortly after I got home, like literally taking my shoes off inside, that there were knocks at the door. It had to be like 1 a.m. I said, who is it? And it was Zach on the other side. He said, it's me. I wanted to scream. I was home alone. I yelled through the door to leave or my dad will come out and kick your ass. That seemed to work as he didn't knock again. I texted everyone I knew about the situation, my family, all my friends. I was horrified. Some suggested calling the police. I said I would go to the nearest station tomorrow, but tomorrow didn't even come yet when I received a super long, disgustingly weird and creepy text from guess who. I was appalled when I picked up my phone and read it. This is what it said. I'm feeling a lot of emotions right now after being used by someone for months and then lied to, and hurt and anger are two of them. I thought from the start of the semester in chemistry class that our chemistry was through the roof, no pun intended. I must say, I am hurt that you would make up something as elaborate as a two week long Miami trip just to avoid going out with me, even after I stuck my neck out for you all semester and risked my own academic standing. I definitely have noticed the way you looked at me sometimes in class, and I can't pretend there wasn't a hint of interest there. All I'm asking for at this point is for one date. That's it. I'm not asking your hand at marriage, though I surely would be quite an ideal husband to have if I do say so myself. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you needed more time to think over the prospect of going on a date with me. I know how much I have to offer, much more than these losers all over campus. If you want, I can come back to your house and we could talk about it in person. I am only making this offer once. I'm just very crushed to feel like I wasted so much this semester for nothing in return. Yours truly, Zach. I sent this to everyone. I didn't care that it was 3 a.m. I called my dad until he picked up, and I told him how scared I was. After he read the text, he took it upon himself to send Zach a lengthy text of his own, and he attempted to call him like 10 times, but Zach is clearly too much of a coward to pick up that phone call. I also went to the police station the next day with the text saying I wanted to press charges, and one of the people working there said that Zach would be contacted. Zach never picked up any of the calls from the police who were trying to get him to come in for questioning, nor did he answer any of their text messages. Zach completely disappeared, I never heard from him again. Between the police contacting him and my dad's pretty scary texts and voicemails, that basement-dwelling creep probably was shitting himself. Luckily, I never saw him on campus again or anything like that. But I can say, 
I know what it's like to deal with an actual stalker. 